Hello and welcome to Arch Eats. I'm George Mayhe. And I'm Cheryl Bear. And this week on Arch Eats, we're going to recommend a few of the ever-popular parish fish fries in St. Louis, as well as what some restaurants serve on Lenten Fridays. And then we'll end up with a rant about how to order food at a table or a quick service counter and how not to. And let's just say that some civility should come into play. This episode of Arch Eats is sponsored by St. Louis Art Museum. But as we always do, we're going to open the show with what I can't stop thinking about this week. It might be maybe my favorite part of the show because we just go. There's no rules. There's no parameters. There's no themes. We just talk about what's on our mind. Oftentimes it's a surprise. I have no idea what you're going to say. But this week, you were so moved by what you can't stop thinking about that not only did I get a phone call, but also a photo. There was a visual aid to this one. I was moved by a hot dog. I mean, the, the there's venerable, worse things to be moved by. The, the venerable, and I use that glowingly, the venerable Woofy dog at Woofy's in Overland. I haven't had one in a couple of years. It was an absolutely perfect hot dog. And, you know, I just couldn't stop talking about it. And I'm kind of a hot dog perfectionist. I don't like foot-long hot dogs or spirals or those circle-cut ones that have to fit on a hamburger bun. And the bun has to fit the meat. You can't have that foot-long dog hanging out of a standard bun. That drives me crazy. But what I like at Woofies is they do everything perfectly, including the portioning of all the goodies on a Chicago dog. And, uh, you know, for us food geeks, we, we talk about that as the optimal bite ratio, right? Everything is perfect on every bite. And it's really hard to get that on a sandwich or on a hot dog or anything else. And, and, and Woofie's just nails it. And, and again, the hot dog's the right size, pickle's the right size. Everything there is, is perfect. And uh, I'd forgotten what a perfectly made hot dog was. They don't grill their hot dogs unless you want them to. They don't boil them. You never boil a hot dog. No. It makes them tough. They steam them and they actually use a double boiler there. I mean, and it's the classic way to do it. It is. And it's, it's um, uh, again, this Chicago dog, uh, this wasn't the, one of their big super varieties. This was just the standard uh, four ninety nine hot dog. I mean, it kind of harkens me back to one of my favorite places in Chicago called the Wiener Circle. And you've, you've been to the Wiener Circle? I have not been there. It's where they, you get a hot dog with a, with a side of sass. You get an insult every it. time you go there. I don't care if you, you're trying to play it straight or not. I mean, they're funny and they, they cuss at you and you can cuss back and it's, it's a riot. Uh, and, and the last time I was in there, I, I, I tried to pay cash. And she said, oh, honey, how long has it been since you've been here? We haven't taken cash since the pandemic. And I said, oh, OK. You oh, you goodness. Busted. Anyway, they do it right. But here, it's woofies. It's woofies all the way. At woofies, you can drive through. You can sit on mm -hmm. that nice patio and you can dine in in that little 12 stool dining room that's got all those old celebrity yes. photos on the wall. And what I didn't realize, because it's been a while, is I sat down right in front of an article that someone I know very well wrote. Mm, gee, I wonder who that could have been. <laughs> right, yes. at, right at eye level so I could read it while I consume my hot dog. Yes. You remember I, writing that article, I do. I, guess? I do. I love it. Um, I wrote it because Wolfie's, I mean, it is such an institution. And I think that's what makes it such a beautiful place is, yes, the hot dog is excellent. It's quintessential. But it's also just this kind of slice of nostalgic St. Louis food food tradition that, you know, I think we, it looks you know, like, they're going away and I hope no, it, it doesn't go away, it, it, please. It, 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 it's got a, has a fresh paint job, which is nice, mm -hmm. it's, but it still looks like a diner from the 50s. Yes. But it's been spiffed up, cleaned up. And it's, you know, nobody insults you there. Everybody's very, very nice. And But I remember in your article, there was, you said there was a guy that comes in there every day at the yes. same time for a hot dog. That's tradition. I mean, yes. that's. That's hardcore loyalty. I'm not going to do that, but I will go back to Woofie's. Soon. Absolutely, yeah. How how can you not? No, it's it was it was too good, and and I'll look at that picture uh, every time I want a hot dog, and I know where I'm going. Yeah, it's just perfect. So, what do you got this week? What's so, on your plate? I too went to maybe not as storied of a St. Louis institution, but definitely somewhere that's been around for a while that people know about. Um, you know, I know I wax poetically about the Wrights Taverns and stuff of the world, but I love Tucker's for a steak. I love Tucker's Place. It's one of my favorites. You know, they just have such a well-seasoned grill. They nail the temps on their um, on their steaks all the time. I love the Tucker's sauce. 
Well, that, that's the Andrea steak sauce. Yes. That, that steaks, that brush on steak sauce it's that you so can buy good. in the store. And oh, yeah. it is distinctive and it is delicious. I have mine, I have some in the refrigerator at home right now. Yeah, a little like sticky, it, not overwhelmingly sweet, but there's a little bit of that undertone, nice, like good texture, a little oniony kind of flavor to it. It's so wonderful. But I'm actually not thinking about Tucker's steaks. Well, see, that's what everybody thinks about yes. because. It's one of the most reasonably priced yes, it is. steaks in town. I, I don't know the exact price, but a filet dinner, I believe, is under 30 bucks. It used to be under 20 bucks back before things got crazy. Yeah, exactly. But it's still one of the best great steak deals in town. But, you know, you don't eat steak there? Yeah. Well, I do eat steak there. And I was eating steak there um, this past weekend. But the people next to me at the bar, they ordered a pizza. And I'm thinking, why what? would you go to Tucker's and order a pizza? You obviously get a steak or a burger. Yep. I'm telling you, this pizza came out and it, it is perhaps the most beautiful example of a thin crust St. Louis style pizza I have ever seen. It was flawlessly executed. Did you, did you bum a piece from your neighbor? I didn't. I thought I, I've actually done that before. <laughs> I do it all the time at a restaurant. You make friends with the people next to you and maybe you make a trade. Yeah, you get a little little sample. But um, we talked to them quite a bit about it. And they said that they go there for pizza all the time. Um, Perfect crust, like nice and thin, crispy, holds up to the toppings. The toppings, they had chunks of sausage that were so large, they look like meatballs on there. I mean, Uh, I'm talking like golf ball sized chunks of Italian sausage on there. Beautifully sliced pepperoni. Um, the cheese was just perfect on there. I, it, it was a perfect specimen of the St. Louis style form. Apparently, it is, at least in the West County location, it is the place where people in that area go for their St. Louis style pizza. I had no idea. Yes. So I can't stop thinking about this pizza. I'm going to try it the next time. If you can peel me away from the steak, I am going to try it the next time. You can get it. We saw people... Like once you see it, you can't not see it because I noticed so many takeout boxes of pizza boxes just going out, you know, across the bar all night long. So I think it's kind of like not a secret, but it's a if you know, you know. And I'm assuming that this is available at all the Tuckers across town. So it's not like you have to travel to West County. I'm sure the other couple locations have this pizza as well. That is really good information. I had no idea. We'll be right back. Dive into the world of renowned artist Henri Matisse as his masterpieces come alive to examine the significance of the sea through paintings, sculptures, drawings, prints, and more. On view through May 12th at the St. Louis Art Museum, this groundbreaking exhibition explores Matisse's lifelong fascination beneath the waves, tracing his travels across his career. Visit slam.org slash exhibitions to get your tickets and explore the global influences that shaped Matisse's art. And now, back to the show. So now let's let's shift gears. Let's go from pizza and steaks to fish, because that's what we're here to talk about, because it's the Lenten season. At this time of year, many St. Louisans' thoughts turn to fish fries. Everybody seems to be checking out a fish fry. Which place are we going to go to this Friday? You hear it all the time. It's like a rite of of spring here it, in St. Louis. It truly is. And it's something that, um, you know, I grew up Catholic. I was, you know, a Florissant, Sacred Heart Parish gal all through elementary school and all of that. So um, the fish fry was a thing, but it really feels that it has exploded into a phenomenon over the past maybe five, ten years. Like anything else, it seems like. Yes. You know, like all the holidays, all of a sudden everything's just bigger and grander yes. than, than it used to be. And and fish fries, I you know, I didn't know this. I just remember when I was a kid uh, growing up Catholic, it was no meat on Friday. Yes. And then they changed that in the 60s to no meat during Lent Fridays, right? Exactly. And so things that loosened up a little bit. I, I learned that the Catholic fish fry didn't arise because of this. It, it arose in the Depression times, right? Because pubs, specifically in Wisconsin, couldn't sell beer during Prohibition, but there was plenty of fish. It was cheap. And they decided to start frying it up because it was a source of revenue. For you them. have got to be kidding and that's me. That's how it started. And if you look into, you know, do some Googling on and Wisconsin fish fries are a big deal. That's, I think, the state where they're the biggest. There's a lot of Catholics there. There's a lot of fish there. 
but I didn't realize that, that that's how it started. The Catholic parishes picked up the practice and it spread to cities like St. Louis wow. where it's been ingrained here ever since. And I just thought it was, it was great. And it's, it's sure it's an opportunity for income. I think parishes make a lot of money at these fish fries, but it's also an opportunity for families to get together and, and break bread, or in this case, you know, break into some breaded cod. So, <laughs> oh no, that, that, oh, that's no. it. That, that's the history lesson. I, I didn't want to go too far into the weeds, but I thought it was important to, to kind of frame this out a little bit. Well, it is important because, I mean, people are listening, they can't see, but my jaw is on the floor. I never yeah. thought this had anything to do other than a Catholic church tradition. Just coming so up with some idea. You've blown my mind. And, and, and in St. Louis, especially, you see, I mean, there's Facebook groups, there's folks that come into these, you know, little clubs and everybody's got their t-shirts on and they hit several every week. I remember there was a former editor at, at St. Louis magazine. He was from out of town. And he said that, that for transplants who can't answer the high school question, the best way to become a true St. Louis is, is to hang out at a fish fry. It's so true. It, it is absolutely true. I was wondering how many there were. And there's some folks that write about this. Mm -hmm. I, I think every TV station has a list. Uh, the Post-Dispatch has a list. Uh, there are upwards of 130 fish fries in Goodness the metro gracious. area, most of them from Catholic parishes. Each one has its own personality and its own vibe, you know, and its own tagline some of the time. One of is like serving God by serving cod. That's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And the other one is in cod we trust. So many puns. And, so and, many. And that leads into, I think, yes. one of yours that you want to talk about, right? Yeah. The in cod we trust. I've, I've got the right Parish, right? Exactly. Okay. Well, this is actually God's cod, I believe. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. But, okay. I mean, there are too many puns. You know, it's it's hard to keep track of all the cod and God puns. So, you know, I feel like we're going to get struck by lightning. But I thought it would be fun this week um, because, as you mentioned, you can get them at restaurants, you can get them at VFW halls. But to me, the quintessential fish fry experience is at the parish level, which it always makes me chuckle a little bit because, as I said, growing up Catholic, you know, we are well versed in how, um, you know, doing without doesn't necessarily mean doing without, you know, you may be doing without meat on Fridays, but, stuff your but face you're with stuffing cod. your face with cod <laughs> and mac and cheese and you are definitely having beer out of a plastic cup served from the gym concession stand. So it's it's a party, which I always felt like was a little bit ironic about that. But, you know, anyway, I thought it would be fun to go through my absolute, you know, there's so many. You said, what, 130? Yeah, we can't do them all today, folks. We can't do them all, so. for you. I was going to go through my um, five favorite, okay. my absolute okay. favorites. Because I've so, got a few, too. Exactly. So the, the God's Cod, that refers to St. Mary Magdalene, the Brentwood Church. The thing that's so great about this is the quality of the cod actually is good. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, you go to the fish fry for the experience. You don't actually go because you're trying to have the finest example of, you know, a seafood culinary experience right, here. Right. But um, but their cod's actually good. And um, they even do a drive through. So, you know, a couple places are doing carry out drive throughs and stuff. But and it's but, popular. You yes, go it is. Anywhere near Mary Magdalene on a Friday afternoon in Lent. And there's a line around the box. Yes. And they've even been known for those who aren't into the fried stuff. They've even been known to do a, a salmon with a really good dill sauce there. So, you know, keep that in mind if you're if you're wanting something a little light. There, there's no secret to it. You know, if you get there early, there's a crowd. If you get there late, that's usually a little better because as it gets closer to seven o'clock, everybody's been fed. And that's the time I tend to go. It's about 630 and you won't encounter a huge line. And hopefully you'll find some cod because it could be sold out. Exactly. But, but that's, the, that's the, the chance you take. So speaking of cod, so number two on my list here is, um, you know, as I mentioned, I am a fluorescent gal. And uh, even though this was not my parish growing up, St. Ferdinand up in Florissant was the, like, that was the place to be. It's one of the places to be in the entire St. Louis area for a fish fry. But definitely, it's, it's, it's the jewel of the North County um, Parish Lenten fish fry there. So St. Ferdinand is so wonderful because they, too, have cod. They do catfish. They do it fried. They do it baked. They do shrimp. 
They do Cajun dusted fish pieces there. That's become a thing. There's a yes. lot of Cajun fish out there at these yes. fish fries, and I'm not opposed to that. Side dishes, they have this. Um, they have this really good spaghetti that they serve on the side. Obviously, it's meatless, you know, because it's Lent. But um, Saint Ferdinand to me, it just uh, it embodies that whole idea of you're gathering in the gymnasium, you're with friends and family. Kids are running around playing on the bleachers. You're getting your beer out of, you know, like a solo cup. It's just <laughs> as classic as it comes. You have, if you want the true experience. I'm going to see if you like this place as much as, speaking of semi-North County, this is in Maryland Heights called Holy Spirit. Okay. I have not been to Holy oh Spirit. Oh my gosh. It's, it was my favorite up that way for a long time. The priest was a, was a foodie. He would make a soup every week. He would make uh, a pasta every week. He oh, had a wow. pasta to tomorrow that was on the on the buffet line. Um, he had a, a a crab soup that I swear had five dollars worth of crab, oh, in my it, gosh. and they sold it for three. It was anyway. He, unfortunately, he's not there anymore. But they still do a really good job. They hand cut and they hand batter the cod. Uh, they've got grilled salmon. They've got homemade desserts. All the all the requisite stuff. But when when they they also call them, they don't even call it a fish fry. It's a seafood dinner. Oh, it's, it's this is. Yeah, that's, it's it's a step above. And, well, the, and the thing I really like about it is they do a raffle every week. And a raffle is for eight people to come to the Lenten seafood dinner the next Friday. And the winners get to sit at a round top table with, oh, a, with a tablecloth. And the meal is served on China. And last year, I think it was served by the Girl Scouts. So you just can't get any more wholesome and no. fun than this that. This is just perfect. Well, that is such a perfect segue into my uh, my third one that I love, which is Holy Trinity. It's the Serbian Orthodox Church. This, again, is for maybe a fish fry goer who has the refined taste there because they do actual flatware and plates there. I don't know if it's the fine china that they're doing mm. in Holy Spirit. Can't hurt. But you actually do get it on a real plate. So So that's great. That means you can just pile it up extra, you know, there. So spicy catfish. They do fish tacos there. They do a um, a baked cod with a Creole sauce, peel and eat shrimp, beers there. But at least the last I heard, they had a fully stocked bar. I mean, we're... That's not very common. Yeah. It's usually beer and wine. Yes. So where is this Holy Trinity? So that is... Uh, Holy Trinity is in um, McKinley Heights, I think it is. So South City, think kind of Jefferson, not quite Lafayette and, Square. And the reason I asked you, oh. I'll, I'll see your Holy Trinity and raise you a Holy Trinity, the one in Fairview Heights. Oh, goodness. There's so one many Trinities. There's one in Fairview Heights where it, it's it's exceptional. The the recipes there are, are 60 years old. Oh, that's wonderful. They they have a uh, thick cut cod, again, mm -hmm. hand cut, hand mm -hmm. breaded. And the reason I know about that is for the last couple of years, I've been one of the judges of the annual Fish Fry Smackdown on the Dave Glover Show. Oh, my where, goodness. Where they get one parish per week to come in. We score the parish. And the winner is awarded the Golden Cod Trophy as oh, well as goodness. bragging rights. And last year... Holy Trinity was the best cod that I remember having. Really, And they do a, a great fried cod. They do a cod almondine. How's that? Oh, um, I mean, we are going high end and, here. And, and you talked about spaghetti. Um, the spaghetti sauce is is homemade and it's it's sweet. It's on the sweet side. So mm -hmm. Wilson's love sweet Oh, things. yes, we do. And, and my cohort judge, Kevin Colleen, ate his entire bowl of spaghetti. That's all I remember. So go for the fish, stay for the spaghetti. They serve uh, hush puppies and they serve little little cups of Mrs. Butterworth syrup to dunk your hush puppy in. Are we going to Fairview Heights? Or oh, not? I think I think Fairview Heights is that's emerging as a top contender. This and and what's what's year. best is they're open on Good Friday. They do a Good Friday fish fry, okay. which most parishes they yes. they take a pass on that day. But there's a handful that do, and Holy Trinity and Fairview Heights is one of them. And some will do an Ash Wednesday one yes, too. Absolutely. So you've got to you've got to look on their Facebook pages for that. And something else that's unusual is what they do up at St. Alphonsus Rock on North Grand mm -hmm. near Page. Mm -hmm. They only do their fish fry from eleven to five p.m. Huh. It's the only luncheon fish fry that I know. They don't do it at night. They do it in the day. Well, that's brilliant. Yeah, it really is really smart. So that's something wow, unusual. Wow, that's great. We'll have to put that on the list. So I'm going out with a bang here. My last one, I think everyone's going to know exactly what we're getting right. If you know anything about St. Louis fish fry lore, you know. I know what it is. St. Cecilia. Has something to, yep. 
St. Cecilia, the beloved Mexican fish fry. This is a fiesta. It is such a festive experience there. Music, margaritas, fish tacos, tostadas. It's the only fish fry with chili rellenos that I know of in the whole world. Yes. If you haven't been, just know you're going to wait in line for a very long time. So load up on margaritas. Don't order one, order two, and make sure you have a backup because you will be in line for a while, but I promise it's worth it. And even though you're standing in line, just the whole atmosphere is so wonderful to soak in that it does go by pretty quickly and you still feel like you're a part of something when you're standing in line. And I I think they still do this. They did when I was there and it was the most memorable part of the whole thing. You get a guided tour of that beautiful 110-year-old church. It's It's just, I I didn't know anything about it until I walked in. It took my breath away. There's a, a uniformed grade schooler from St. Cecilia Mm -hmm. that takes you through and has this little spiel. And I talked to the parish priest one time. He goes, those kids know more about this place than I do. Yes. And and it's just great. And and it's it's very competitive because it's um it's really good for the for the kids. Apparently the tips are great. And uh anyway, it's it's a great experience touring that church and and you can always come back for a Sunday mass, which they do in Spanish. Yes. Shout out to my late mom. That was her parish when she was a little girl. So my my best in show is is uh, again one that won the golden cod two years in a row on the Dave Glover show, and it's Our Lady of the Pillar. Oh yes, and I don't know if they still do this, but you talked about having uh, beverages available. Oh yes, the, the, you walk in the door, and the first person you see standing behind a little uh, table is the parish priest saying, what will you have? And yes. it's got wine and beer. And it's just like, a, it's not even an option. Okay, I guess I'll have some wine. And anyway, I think that that's a riot is very, very uh, uh, apropos, let's say. Yeah, anyone who grew up Catholic knows that that is the most, um, it, it's a stereotype, but it's so true that, you know, when you roll up to the fish fry, the first thing you're going to have is the is the bar. Oh, it's just great. It keeps... Keeps everybody's spirits high, so yes. to speak. Yes. And, and it's just a good time. And what's unusual about this place is they've got two lines. There's the, the lines of people everywhere, but there's two service lines, and it's the most efficiently run system that I've seen. That's huge. People run, you know, one guy runs out of stuff, the guy raises his hand, and somebody whoosh, whooshes out there with some more mac and cheese. And then the next guy, I'm out of cod. It's a finely tuned watch. They run and a tight ship there. They do. And it's, it's just, it's wonderful. Uh, their signature dish isn't the cod apparently. Huh. It's the baked salmon. Oh. And I was told that, and I'm a cod guy, and I went, okay, I'll try the baked. It was really good. Really? So anyway, they 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 do a great job. The mac and cheese is the cheesiest in town, I think. The tomato sauce is nice and chunky. Mm-hmm. The, they have crab rangoon there. I don't know if, I said, I'm not sure if there's a, that's the right place for a crab rangoon, but you know what? It just tasted fine. Is there ever a wrong place for crab rangoon? <laughs> I mean, let's be, let's be honest here. <laughs> Our Lady of the Pillar, brown rice, they do all kinds of interesting things there. And again, don't be dissuaded by the long lines because they go quickly. Yes. So that takes care of a lot of our favorites. And there's another 120 we could have talked about. Yes, one day we'll have to catalog all of them. But but these fish fries are not just for parishes. The fraternal organizations in town get in on the act too. But what I like about the one that I go to is they wait until the parish fish fries end for them to begin. Mm Mm-hmm. At the post 338 American Legion out on Midland in Overland, Mm -hmm. they start on Good Friday and go throughout September every Friday afternoon. And it's it's so good that I can't you buy your cod by the pound. That's wonderful. I think they started doing sandwiches, but everybody's, you know, you walk how many pounds you want. Well, wow, this is big time. Wow. It is. uh, Come hungry. It's really well done. Um. you know, fresh cooked, obviously hand cut, hand battered, uh, catfish, shrimp. They've got all the other goodies there too, but you can eat your your dinner under the pavilion mm-hmm. there. Anyway, again, it's not confined to Lent. You can, again, starts in late March, goes through September. It's the post 338 in Overland. I it's love it. such a good experience. Maybe my favorite cod experience in town. I don't know if you'd qualify as exactly a fish fry per se, but hobos at the Legion out in St. Peter's. That. I mean, I know we're talking about fish. I have to say they have some of the best ribs in town, but um, 
So maybe do that on a uh, Tuesday yeah, or seen, Thursday yeah. during Lent. Nothing says Lent like but, a slab of ribs. But Hobos <laughs> has such great catfish. So, and they have that kind of festive, you know, even though it's not technically a fish fry, everyone in that area is there on Fridays getting their fried catfish. So I definitely recommend that. They too have wonderful mac and cheese. They have great mashed potatoes. That's, if you haven't been out to Hobos, that is a fun Love the spot. name too. Yeah, exactly. So Fridays in Lent, right? Every parish participates, but the restaurants don't want to miss out on this either. Mm -hmm. You know, most restaurants have meat-centric menus, and uh, let's face it, on Fridays in Lent, uh, you know, their their customer count takes a hit. It's so, true. So what they do is a lot of them have started offering fish entrees, fish sandwiches, fish appetizers, just to say, hey, we're, don't forget about us here. Yeah. And there's a couple that around town that have kind of risen to the top, I think, a couple that we can talk about. My favorite might be the fish sandwich that's available at Rockwell Beer Company. Yeah, that's a now, wonderful uh, fish this sandwich. Was, this was done in the past by, by Gerard Crafts Brasswell, which is not there anymore. So I'm anxious to try it and see if this year's iteration measures up. But it's, it's, a, it's a really good uh, fish sandwich. And what I like about Rockwell is they have a beer that they brew called Fish Fry. Have you seen this beer? I have not. It's a seasonal uh, American light lager that goes perfectly with fish. And it's a, this orange can with a fish on it that's drinking a beer. Oh, that's wonderful. And it's available. <laughs> I think you can buy it at retail too, but you can certainly get it uh, with a fish sandwich at Rockwell. One of my other favorites, and I know, Cheryl, you know about this, is, is what they do at Joya's. This is maybe the most over-the-top example of the fish fry season. They do this every year, and, and it's like he almost doesn't want to do it because it's too successful. He's got two sandwiches, one called the King Cod that's topped with mac and cheese and red hot riplets. And, of course, it's served on garlic cheese bread like right. all their sandwiches are. I mean, are. as any sandwich should be, right? <laughs> There's a classic cod that doesn't have quite as many bells and whistles, but you can get those at Joya's on Lenten Fridays. And it is it sells out. I interviewed him about this one time, Alex Donnelly, the owner, and um, I think he said that that is the only thing that will outsell the hot salami when they're offering it. It's it's, That's why I say it's kind of a mixed phenomenon. blessing for him. It's like, hold on to your hats. It's Lenten season. Exactly. Exactly. Now, at, at Salt and Smoke, you know, again, they take a hit. You think they take a hit on Lenten Fridays. And you Tom Schmidt think? said, you know, when I opened up, I didn't even know if I wanted to open up on those days. Yeah. But he says that. Uh, his his meat traffic is very strong on, on Lenten Fridays. But, but despite that, they do a beer batter fried haddock sandwich, which is interesting because most people do cod. Mm -hmm. Why haddock? I said, because haddock has a little more flavor. Uh, the flake isn't quite as big. It's a smaller flake. It's a little more negotiable. You yeah. know, cod has those giant flakes. Yes. And it's a little harder, honestly, to make a sandwich out of. And it's cheaper than cod. So if you find and see haddock around town at a fish fry, don't shy away because it's a really good option. I had some haddock at a at a at a fish stand up in New England, and it was the best sandwich I've ever had. Oh, I love haddock, and you know it's that classic like Ritzy preparation with the Ritz crackers and stuff. It's the perfect fish for that. It's so um, it's so delicate. I it's one of my favorite white fishes to be honest yeah, with it you. It is. It's great. It's great. For, great for a sandwich too. At at Max Local Eats, he does a crawfish po' boy. Every Lent. Oh, that sounds delicious. Tempura batter, fried crawfish tails with, again, red hot riplet seasoning. Of course. Say no more. Of course. Thank you, Chris, from Max Local Eats. Yes. Do you have any other restaurant uh, spots? Well, I mean, you have to go to Peacemaker. I mean, yes. and the thing that's nice about Peacemaker is you, um, you, know, you can pretty much get what your standard order is there if you go on, if you're observing right, Lent. Right. You know, you can get your, you know, lobster roll and all of that. But you actually turned me on to their fried cod on the Hawaiian bun with American cheese and pickles. That is such a you such can't a go classic. wrong there. Like you said, you can get anything you want. You know, it's a seafood joint, and uh, you know, on Lenten Fridays they've got these great fish sandwiches. Yeah, too. think of it as a a high end and beautifully executed version of like a filet o fish with the American cheese and the pickles. Yeah, I love that place. Uh, there's another one that has another upscale sandwich, Urban Chestnut Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. 
And there they do, uh, they put, uh, they do kind of an elevated take on fish and chips. They, they do beer battered cod with palm frites. So palm frites definitely caught my eye. And then I saw kohlrabi slaw and I said, oh, okay, wow. this is definitely a step above. They're taking it to the next level so, here. So yeah, Urban Chestnut offers that with or without, a, you know, it's, it's, I think it's so much with a beer and so much without, but yes. I highly recommend a beer with that. Now there's one also that I had last year, and I know they're going to do it again at Winslow's Table. Mm -hmm. And they do everything super well, too. They they do a beer batter. They either use cod or haddock, depending on which they feel is the freshest and the best that week. So you'll see either one there. And they do a red cabbage slaw, a toasted brioche bun. It's, it's really tasty. And they have that available for lunch and dinner mm -hmm. during fish fry season. And new this year, they'll also have the popular Taqueria Marita fish tacos. And if you haven't had Taqueria and Marita's fish tacos, you are missing out. And get them while you can here. But we're also excited that they'll soon be opening that storefront where you can get fish tacos. What's so fun is these are such a classic fish taco from you know, his youth growing up in, you know, Southern California, they would go to Baja and, and travel around there. So you were getting that like classic beachside fish taco experience. And I, I should note that during Lent, it's just uh, at dinner time those fish tacos. Mm -hmm. So don't go in there and you by asking for those. But that's definitely worth your while. There's, you know, the, uh, there's a couple places I get hankerings for fish and chips all year long. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just a Friday and Lent thing. So where do I go? Two places. Schlafly, which I think is the quintessential mm -hmm. place for, for fish and ships. They do uh, a Hefeweizen battered cod. You know, and it's just, just sounds better than beer battered, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. How can Hefeweizen battered be, be bad? I just, I just like the sound of it. Yes. In the same vein, out at, out at Three Kings Public House, they've got a beer battered cod with natural cut fries, always better, and lemon caper aioli. No tartar sauce here, folks. Yes. This is lemon caper aioli. So I automatically I'm I'm sold. This is very sophisticated yes. here. Yes. Now now the, the the last one I want to talk about, something new this year, is at Five Star Burgers. And this is their burger of the month, quote burger in in, in quotes. And uh, they've decided to extend this during Lent because it's the Houdat burger. And I had one last night and it was spectacular. I I saw a picture of it and I said, that's gotta be wonderful. It's six ounces of shrimp with some onion, minimal binder, and it comes on a brioche bun with lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle, and and uh, some a little po' boy sauce. And let me tell you, it is a really good, again, I use it in quotes, burger, and it's available all through Lent. It uh, should be their burger of the month, February, but he's going to extend it for another month. See, And, it, and I'm glad he did because it is dynamite. That sounds wonderful. I like that they're using shrimp, so you're getting something a little bit different than, you know, your standard fish sandwich. It's so hard to go to Five Star and order anything, but they're excellent. They might be my favorite thick burger yes, in town. Yes. Um, it's it's one of those places that, uh, gosh, they just do everything right there. Well, and 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 what I like about Steve uh, Gontram, he's a fine dining chef. He's yeah. the former chef owner at Harvest, which was a, a mm -hmm. major restaurant back mm -hmm. in the day. And he knows how to do things right. And he knows the importance of keeping a lid on prices. And he's kept his prices down where no one, many people have. For instance, that $1 little ice cream cone that oh, you it's, get. It's perfect. It, it's, you know, salted caramel ice cream mm -hmm. from Ronnie's or vanilla or chocolate. I don't think anybody orders the other two. Yeah. <laughs> but for a buck. And you have to, and there's just no better feeling just to sit there with your little ice cream cone yes. at the end. That's the perfect way. Uh, and everybody's got a buck to spend on ice cream, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, what better way to spend a dollar? And, you know, they are also, this is probably a topic for another day, but they are also one of the most kid-friendly restaurants in town. They have a great kid's menu. They're very welcoming. The dollar ice cream cones. Yes, it it's a favorite for yeah, sure. Yeah, and it should be. So that brings us to the end of our show and another favorite segment. It's the micro rant, okay? And... Cheryl doesn't know about this one. This is one of mine, and I noticed this recently, and I call it the I'll do the syndrome. Huh. When somebody walks up to a counter or talks to their server and says, I'll do the latte with almond milk, I'll do a cranberry scone, I'll do a cheeseburger, I'll do this, I'll do... It just sounds a little crass to me. Uh, you know, let's ignore the proper grammar and, and just focus on the courtesy or the lack thereof. A simple please or thank you. 
I think goes a long way. And throw in a little eye contact and a smile while you're at it. Does that bother you at all? I, I always, I stand behind these people and I go, please, or, you know, may I have, or it's- something like that. I'm kind of doing it for them. I just hope that everyone just can think of manners and civility when they're ordering. It's very simple ask. It is. And I'm less concerned with the actual language than I am of the tone and the the eye contact. The eye contact is the thing that really, you know, I think that's just a courtesy we owe everyone. You know, you're looking at someone, they're, they're a human being. They're not, you know, a kiosk. Maybe we're just so used to ordering at kiosks now that We've lost that sort of connection. Right. Especially in, a, in an in-person situation, you know, put the phone down and look at the person that's taking your order and, you know, form some kind of bond. That's what we're there to do. I mean, you're going to be tipping them 40 percent now, apparently. So you might as well have at least some sort of courtesy and interaction with them. So that's all for this week. A little civility is all we ask, folks. That's all from here. Thank you for listening to Arch Eats. Be sure to follow us and share with your friends because we put out new episodes every other Friday. And we always provide links in the show notes for everything you heard about today. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow along on Instagram at St. Louis Mag. And feel free to give us a follow personally at George Mayhe and Cheryl A. Bear. If you loved what you heard, show us some love by rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. And if you're hungry for even more content, you can subscribe to our dining newsletters for the freshest coverage on the local restaurant and culinary scene. That's it for this week. Best dishes and see you next time.